Hi there, Serial Trader here. I got a request to look at some uh, Canadian listed stocks. Uh, I think most, if not all of them, are also listed in the US uh, from Mary. Uh, so I will look at the actual Canadian dollar denominated uh, tickers of these, because why not? That's what uh, she's interested in anyways. And I can access that data here, no problem on TradingView, so I might as well. And uh, we'll start off here with TD, so Toronto Dominion Bank. Uh, so as far as the overall move off the March 2020 lows, where, uh, as we know, many uh, different entities bottomed at the same time there, uh, I think we're getting pretty uh, mature in what's obviously an impulse wave off that low. Uh, I think we have a leading diagonal, just to start off from the bottom here, leading diagonal wave one, uh, well, sorry, I'll, I'll do the subwaves of the leading diagonal. So one, two, three, that's our four, and then we get the five. And let me just knock down the degree. So in a leading diagonal, you actually have uh, wave four versus one overlap, and then wave three has to be shorter than wave one, and then wave five has to be uh, shorter than wave three, which I've checked already, and that's all the case. So we have a legitimate contracting leading diagonal wave one up so let's get our uh, larger degree labels up here uh, and then we just have our ABC down for the two get that to snap onto the bottom and then that's our wave three peak up here very clean we did an ABC, ABC down for the wave four and now I believe we're getting to the later stages of wave five Okay, now as you can see, I've shown the subdivisions of this leading diagonal one because it's uh, a little bit more of a uh, rare or complicated pattern as opposed to just the typical impulse wave one. That's why I want to show up. But the rest of it, pretty straightforward. Five up for one, three down for two. And then we're in this clearly impulsive wave three. Um, I mean, I could go through the, the labels of that as well, but no need. You can definitely get a five wave structure out of that, no problem. And then we have the wave four, ABC down for four. Now, as far as wave five, I would argue maybe we're in the one, two, hmm, three, four, and maybe one, two, in the three of the five. So there could be a little bit more short-term upside here. Maybe, you know, pushing on farther into the 100s, close to 110 or something like that. Certainly can't rule that out. Uh, but as far as entering... A position at this stage this is really late in the game here as far as I'm concerned for TD uh, like terrible trade location might be a great company well it is I mean in Canada it's a good bank for sure good company successful company but uh, a great company can be a terrible stock if you enter at the wrong location and, and vice versa a terrible company can be a great stock if you just have great trade location uh, so there you go but yeah definitely would not be looking to enter this at this uh, current stage, uh, if I go to, uh, you know, some simple technicals here. So RSI, we're making lower highs in RSI, but higher highs in price. That's quite indicative of a move that's nearing completion. Uh, so momentum not making new highs, even though price is. That's typically what you would look for in a fifth wave move. Uh, and then, I, I mean, once it finishes going up here, I mean, I'd be looking for a sizable correction, not only in price, but also time. So until that starts happening, there's not much to analyze as far as downside targets or anything. Um, and that could certainly correlate with an overall market decline, perhaps. But uh, it's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, weekly chart. Uh, well, also, let me just remove the wave labelings. Or sorry, wave labels here for a bit. And if we just look at something really simple but it actually can be pretty useful so weekly rsi so we're obviously overbought on weekly rsi slightly less overbought than the prior uh weekly overbought reading so that's actually a little bit of a weekly bearish rsi rsi divergence although if we keep going up that might uh, not remain the case but nonetheless if we look at the prior instances where rsi was overbought on the weekly was this a good place to enter the market right here where we overbought we were in the high 80s almost 90 well no shortly after if you entered there i mean we corrected down to 80 so you had a pretty sizable pullback for a stock like this 
right? For a major bank to go from almost 90 to 80, uh, I wouldn't want to be getting in for that, right? Uh, if we go back over here, mm, okay, so we got into this overbought range here around 71 on the weekly. And was that a good area to enter the market? I mean, if you got in a little bit earlier when it was overbought, yes, it continued going up a bit more, but then it went down a lot more than it went up after that. Uh, so you, you know, top, you went from 71 down to 61. So it seems like, like to do these, you know, $10 drops at least when you get uh, overheated on the weekly RSI. How about over here when we got overbought on weekly RSI? Uh, and remember, you got overbought, you know, right back here. So it's not like it necessarily stopped going up and went down just because you were overbought. But I don't think you got that much upside before you went into a correction uh, any way you look at it here. So just kind of an objective way of looking at it. Yes, do I want to enter this particular stock or this particular market when the weekly RSI is in overbought territory? I think the clear answer is no. It's just not good trade location, even if it does eventually go back up beyond where you entered. Why Why do that, right? Uh, so that's my thoughts on TD. Let's go over to tech resources. Uh, now there's the tech B shares and the tech A shares. They don't look that much different. Uh, there is a bit of a difference, but the tech B shares appear to have more uh, time history here. So I'll go with that. Whatever has the most uh, price history to me is the most relevant or reliable thing to look at. Um, okay, so what I'm actually seeing here, this is the monthly chart, by the way, of tech. I just see a big triangle that's, I'm going to say it's probably not complete yet. So that's where we have an A down, a B up, a C down. Now, here's the thing. You could argue that this is the D up, that's the E down, and we're already starting the real impulse wave to the upside but even if that was the case i'd be waiting for some sort of consolidation of this move but i actually think maybe that's just the d and the e is still to come you know a partial retracement of the d so really in either either situation here i would be looking for a, a pullback to at least assess uh well more importantly a corrective pullback i don't want something that's just going to start nosediving here but if we have a nice kind of meandering sideways to down period and we can start seeing some clear uh, Elliott wave corrective patterns that would be uh, kind of a green light for me to start uh, at least entering or building a maybe a longer term position in tech but I don't think this is good trade location here um, now if I go to again just some simple technical studies so or on the monthly chart keep in mind we're overbought on monthly RSI well let me go back to what I said about TD if we're now, keep in mind, this is even more relevant or more significant because instead of weekly RSI, it's monthly RSI. So to me, the higher the time frame, the more impactful this kind of thing can be. Uh, so back here, when we were actually even less overbought on monthly RSI than we are now, was this a good place to enter tech resources here? Was this good trade location? No, it wasn't. You entered at 35 or so. You went down to, oh, what's that? Eight, 18? No, 1927. So you almost got cut in half. Uh, okay, to me that's poor trade location entering and then getting cut in half. Even if it is going to go up again um, later on, that's that's not not the place you want to be. Uh, over here, when we were overbought a monthly RSI, and again less overbought than we are now, even was this good trade location in 2010 when monthly RSI was here? Well, if you got it anywhere around 61, 62, 64, 65. Well, you went all the well, this is an extreme example, but still just shows you how poor the trade location was based on the monthly overbought RSI. You went all the way down eventually to three dollars and, and change from sixties. That's that's bad. Uh, so that's what I'm seeing here. Also, the reason why I'm kind of thinking that this is just like a now in a triangle, the subwaves of the triangle are, are also corrective structures, so uh, like ABCs uh, within, you know, ABCDE. We can get more into that later, but uh, on some of the educational stuff I plan on doing. But for instance, this, um, or sorry, that's not what I'm looking to do. It'd be like this is what I'm thinking that we're doing here, just an ABC up for the D. And I believe if I uh, am eyeballing it here, We've done a measured move, so 
We take the length of that initial move up in its entirety, project off of this swing low, and we're right about near that equality relationship. Uh, so that's certainly a reasonable place for this to kind of stall out, okay, and then give up uh, into some consolidation. So that combined with the overbought monthly RSI, extremely overbought monthly RSI, in fact, uh, I think it's bad trade location for tech resources. Overall, I think this is a bullish, you know, sideways bullish corrective pattern that will eventually lead, you know, as the months or years even go by to new highs. I, I just don't think this is a good place to be entering the market. So that's what I'll say about tech resources. Uh, okay, uh, Shopify. Let's have a look at Shopify. Uh, okay, so significant pullback. Um, this is the weekly chart. Mm, okay. Let's go with the daily chart, maybe. Okay. Uh, well, we're oversold on daily RSI. We're coming into some prior uh, support area here. Um, there's nothing to say this can't go lower, but I think you're going to get some sort of reaction rally here at the minimum soon. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can maybe go on a lower time frame, even four hour. What do I see? Okay, I can make the case that we've just got a real severe ABC down. And I'll, I'll get to what I'm looking at here. So let's see that. Let's see if we got kind of like an AC equality thing going on here. Not quite, but close. Uh, so AC equality would be 1,266 and change. We got as low as 13.1275. So maybe a little bit more short-term weakness if we're gonna nail that uh, AC equality relationship. Uh, also, you can see it's a nice 535 so far. Uh, 535 ABC zigzag. So I can get five non overlapping waves here on Shopify, I believe. So five down for A. Let's throw the lower degree eight label on that. Hang on. Five down for A, some sort of three up for B, and then another five down for C. So this is nice, this is getting pretty clear. Okay, got all the required sub, sub waves, good structure, oversold on daily RSI. Uh, overall, um, you know, overall this thing is in a longer term uptrend. Uh, we're obviously testing that uptrend, but nonetheless, on the larger time frame, we're moving from the lower left hand, you know, corner to the upper right hand corner of the chart. So technical uptrend certainly established here. Uh, popular growing company, e-commerce and all that. And I do have a pretty strong case here for a corrective pattern, Elliott Wave uh, 535 ABC zigzag, either complete or nearing completion here. I would ideally like to see it just go down a little bit more, but we are certainly oversold in that daily RSI as well. So yeah, I don't think this is a, a terrible place to start looking at Shopify. Uh, certainly like it as far as trade location a lot better than the first two charts I was looking at there. Uh, okay, uh, so that's what I see on Shopify. Uh, what's this? Copper futures. Okay, so this is not in Canadian dollars because uh, it's a major commodity traded in US dollars. Uh, okay, but what I'm seeing on copper, okay, we're obviously in a big uptrend from March 2020 lows on copper. And what I definitely see since we made this high here around 488, yeah, 488, well, 4.888, 888 on copper. This looks like a sideways consolidation pattern that's setting up for another move up. And it's probably a triangle. It certainly has the look of a triangle. So if we go, oh, I'd say, yeah, some sort of A down, B up. C down, maybe this is the D. We're gonna need a little bit more sideways to down here in the E, but certainly looking to hold within this range, not make any kind of lower lows, and then set up the next impulsive sequence to the upside in copper. So copper, certainly overall looking bullish, but just a little bit more sideways to down 
perhaps to finish up this uh, triangle consolidation pattern. Uh, so I don't know if you're looking to trade copper futures. I'm assuming you're not, but whatever implications you feel copper may have on the underlines you're looking at, yeah, I would say copper overall still looking quite bullish. Uh, notwithstanding that it needs to do a little bit more consolidation by the looks of it. Okay, uh, what do we got here? Magna International. Okay, Magna International. Certainly a bullish uh, sequence off the March 2020 lows. Now we've had a nice pullback. Hmm, okay. The question is, is the pullback complete? So a couple things. Uh, either this is part of a larger correction, you know, something like this, like an A, uh, B, or if you go a little further, B and then C down, or this is the entirety of the correction and we're already working something more impulsive the upside. Uh, I would just wait for a little bit more pattern development. I'm not seeing like a real clear entry setup. Um, I mean, I can certainly get like a five wave move out of this, but that, you know, this could just be a little ABC up. So this one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this could be what's called an expanding one, two, three, four, five, expanding leading diagonal wave A, possibly. And then we got the B. And then we're just doing five up, perhaps to spike the highs here, make a marginal new high in the C. So what would the uh, equality relationship be there? That would get us up to 115 and change if we did equality. Uh, let me just drop the degree here on the sub labels, sub wave labels. And what I'm perhaps entertaining is that we got the larger A, we're doing the ABC up for the B, and then we still have a C wave down to come. Uh, that's possible. And then, uh, mm, yeah, you can even make the case that we got a five wave sequence down, five waves down for the A, right? I can definitely get five non-overlapping waves here. Reasonably. Uh, so this would suggest, uh, actually, what else do we got here? Do we have a nice Fib retracement we're coming into? Okay, yeah, you see we have the 618 retracement area coming into play. We didn't even quite hit it there on that first push up. Maybe we're gonna go spike that here. Um, so yeah, I would, I would be cautious here as far as entry magnet at this point. Um, what I would like to see, doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but what I would like to see is a little bit more of a push up, maybe spike these uh, prior highs here at 113 and then falter here and get one more sequence down here in a C wave to at least below this level at 93.24. And then I'd be looking, you know, very keenly at entering Magna at that point if we got a nice ABC down. Um, now there's also the possibility that this is all of the pullback and we're just starting, you know, like a one, two, and we have wave three, you know, about to go off here in progress, but I would need to see a little bit more of the upside, a little bit more convincing action to really embrace that. So I wouldn't be betting on it. Let's put it that way. Um, okay. That's Magna. What's next? CP Canadian Pacific Railway. Okay. This looks uh, pretty good, but not quite ready from my taste yet for an entry. So clearly we're in a bullish move off the March 2020 lows. I sound like a broken record there, but a lot of things did a bullish move off the March 2020 lows. So what do I see here? Okay, so I'm fairly convinced that this is the bottom here for CP rail, and that would be around the 82 level. Because this looks like a nice impulse of five way move up. Now what I actually kind of think is happening here is we got the initial perhaps one up. And I think, well, you could either make the case that this is two down and we're already starting, but we're already starting the three with the four and the five to come. But this doesn't look like third wave price action, okay? This looks choppy, overlapping, corrective. So what I would actually think is maybe we're doing a flat, a flat wave two, and that would be like this, right? Uh, actually, it would be even one lower degree if we're going to work with these sub-labels. Uh, so basically, we're going to, 
I think we've already come up and tested the high, but in, in a B wave of a flat or an expanded flat, you can actually hit the prior high or even, you know, exceed at a certain amount and still have the C wave down in either a running flat, which would just come down to make a higher low or an expanded flat. Uh, or this could develop a new triangle, but no need to get into all the details there. To me, yes, this looks like a bullish chart that's going to have some more upside later on. As far as trade location, not loving an entry right here. Would love to basically see it make a bit of a double top here, pull back again, settle. And then at that point, I would uh, be interested in entry. And the, the low I'd be you know defining risk against would be down here around that 82 level. So that's, uh, and then of course, you would be looking for an impulsive sequence to develop out of there, right? Uh, just kind of eyeballing it. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's CP. Well, I think uh, that's a decent list that I've gone through here, so hopefully that was helpful, Mary. Uh, also, just a uh, question uh, for you, I suppose. So I'm going to be looking to do all these uh, educational videos. Now, there's going to be so much content, it's going to have to be obviously separate videos, so like a series of them. If they were all in one video, I mean, I don't think anyone would sit there for like a 10 or 20 hour video or whatever it ends up being in the end. Um, so should I release them just as I make them? And I'm going to try and make them you know, in sequential order from basically the absolute basics and starting out to, you know, where I'm at now uh, and more complex things and nuances. Should, yeah, so should I release them all as they are made or should I just make them all and keep them hidden until it's all done and then re release it all at the same time? Just kind of a, a question I'm, I'm pondering here. So let me know what you think about that. All right, Serial Trader signing off.